this tutorial, we're going to build a simple tic-tac-toe game using JavaFX. The JavaFX package uses the analogy of a play. In a play, we have a stage, and on that stage, at any one time, a particular scene may be playing. Inside the scene, we have several actors, but in our case, these actors will be buttons and labels and other devices that we choose to put into the scene. So the way it works with JavaFX is you take the actors, you put them into a pane. You can think of the pane as a window pane. The window pane goes into the scene, and then a scene goes onto a stage. Well, let's keep that analogy in mind as we start building our first application, which is going to be to demonstrate how a single button works in JavaFX. So I'm going to start with a new project. And now we're going to start by creating our source files. The first one we're going to create is going to be called button1. And we're going to start by uh, extending our class to include application. And this application class is what contains all the JavaFX components. Now you can see that right now it, uh, the uh, Eclipse does not recognize application, so we're going to come over here and we're going to uh, import the JavaFX application. And the auto import has already been done for us now. Uh, inside the main method, the only thing we're going to put in here is a single line, like this. And uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to resolve these additional errors. You can see it's asking us if we want to create the unimplemented methods, and we do, so we'll click on that. And the start method is the only uh, method that we need to implement in order to satisfy uh, us extending the application class. Now you can see that uh, Java F, uh, Eclipse has already started to do some importing for us. We're going to need to do some more importing. Let's start by defining the state variables we're going to have in our class. And you can see that all of these are currently not understood by Eclipse, so some of these we can import automatically. Uh, some others we may have to import manually. Let's see. Right now it looks like it's able to find all of these. Okay, so now we have all these auto imports done and we are well on our way. One word of caution when doing the auto importing, sometimes Eclipse will suggest the AWT swing library object or class ahead of the JavaFX class. But for this project, we want to make sure we always import from the JavaFX library and not from the AWT library. Okay, so here we have our main method, and all it does is create this, uh, call this launch method. And that launch method is going to uh, call this start method. And the stage that is going to be passed to the start method shown here is arg0. And the first thing that we have to do is to save that as our primary stage. And what we're doing here is we're taking the parameter that was passed to us as the primary stage and saving it. And the reason that we're doing that is we want to be able to access this primary stage from outside this method. We want to be able to access it from anywhere within this class. And so we are taking this temporary link and saving it in this permanent variable. Okay, so for this simple uh, first round, what we're going to do is we're going to create a single button, put it in the pane. We're going to take the pane and put it in a scene. And then we're going to take that one scene and put it on our primary stage and then run the uh, application. Uh, this particular application, the button won't do anything. We'll show later in the tutorial how we can get the button to react and run some code when the button is pressed. What we're going to do now is uh, at the start, we've already set up our primary stage. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a pane. And uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to create the other objects that we're going to use. So we need to create a scene. And while we're at it, we're going to insert the pane into the scene.
these numbers here are going to define the length and width of the uh, seam. And I've chosen uh, different numbers here so you can see the perspective when the uh, code runs. You'll see which side is longer and which side is shorter. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a button. Okay, so I've created a yes button, and I've put this label on the button. Then I've changed the size of the button to make it a little bit bigger, so it'll be easier to work with. And then I've done this odd pane dot get children, uh, which basically gives me access to inside the pane, uh, and then uh, I'm able to add the button there. And then uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to set up our stage. So let's do that now. Uh, we're going to set a title. And now we're going to add the scene to the stage. And lastly, we are going to show the stage to our user. Let's go ahead and run this. And here we have our uh, stage with our scene on it. Here is the title that we added, uh, button demo, and you can see we have a single button. And all that happens right now when we click on it is that the color of the button changes temporarily, but there's no other action taken. For the next part of our tutorial, we're going to add a second button to our stage. And uh, to do that, I have created an another entire class called Button 2, and I've started off by copying all the code from button one into button two. And now we're gonna make some minor adjustments. Uh, one thing we're gonna do is we're gonna switch from the pane that we were using before over to something called a grid pane. And I can make that kind of change here manually by going like that. Alternatively, a better way uh, you should get used to once you're used to dealing with Eclipse is to use Eclipse's refactoring capability. Let me demonstrate that for you. Let's say I wanted to take this pane variable and change it to grid pane. One thing we can do is just come right up here and say refactor and then click on the rename and then we can just say grid pane like that and it will go through the entire class and change the variable name everywhere and it's smart so if you had some other variable named pane one it would know not to change that one even though the word pane is included as a substring. So that's the preferred way of changing uh, variable names and other things inside of Eclipse. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a second button called a no button. Previously we had used this uh, get children thing, but now that we've switched over to a grid pane, we're going to change the way we add the button by using a uh, X and Y coordinate. We're going to add the column number, that's this first number, and then the row number. Now when we add the no button, we will do it similarly. In this case, what's going to happen is that the buttons are going to show up one on top of the other. Now over here, when I created the yes button, I put the label right into the constructor. I'm going to show you another way now you can uh, initialize the text as a separate line. And this is useful in case you want to change the label on the button at a later time. But I'm going to initialize the button using that. And likewise that I did with the yes button, I will make the no button a little bit bigger. And now let's run this and see how it looks. Oops, still have an error here. This should be grid pane. 
And then when we run this, we see we have two buttons now, one on top of the other.